Yes. Medicine. Hi, Hi, I am you suffering thought it was from Hold on, fatigue. hold on, hold on, <clears> hold on. <throat> what do we got here? Wait, hold on. There we go. Let's get some yeah, applause. Hold on. Thank I've you. Been playing around Thank with you. Can you hear this? Push, push, push. Push. Can you hear my claps? I can't hear your claps. Let me see. No, never mind. It, it's I have to play with the way I'm doing this because I need to get my stream deck working. <laughs> Cause your claps aren't that good. My claps are so much better. So why'd you make me so big? You uh, just did that, bro. I didn't do that. <laughs> How can I do that? It's your, it's your, <laughs> here, it's your control, here, not here, my no, control. Don't. How can I make myself bigger on yours? Here, no. I'll go like here. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Much to Say About Nothing podcast. This is Jeremiah's J Man Manero with J Man Speaks coming to you live with Jeffrey Scott Stanton. I always have to say it like that. Just it's some it's like my radio announcer voice. Yeah, I mean you should work on it if that's your radio announcer. <laughs> Jeffrey Scott Stanton. Welcome to the. <laughs> Uh, let's just let's just not say anything for forty minutes. I want to do and this. See how long people say. It. Yeah, boy. So, so uh, we so. have much to say about something or nothing or anything. Well, I mean, let's let's talk about. I always come up with just a jump off topic, which really could be a, a jump off, and then forget about it. <laughs> can I can I give this as the jump off? Can someone yeah. write in the chat if you actually can hear us? Because I have no clue if you actually can hear us. So if you can write in the chat, just type yes if you can hear us. I would love that. And see us. Can you see us? Can you hear us? And where are you from? Yeah, where are you from? Type of where you're from would be lovely since we have. I, people give me thumbs up. That's not writing, but I'll probably follow directions. It's okay. <clears throat> so, Jamin, where is our jumping off ferret. point? We got Jessica <clears throat> saying yes, yes in the building. Okay. All where, right. Where is our jump off point from today? Oh yeah, so our jump off point, we we're talking about the eviction moratorium and or uh foreclosure. However, because you know, eviction laws and foreclosure laws are so different everywhere, you know, depending on where you are, what state, uh, and even in in our state, New York, you know, New York State, it's different from the city, New York metro area and upstate New York. So we're not going to be your attorneys on TV or in person or over no, the phone <clears throat> or anything like that. <clears throat> or but on the, Zoom. On, uh, yeah. Facebook. Not Zoom. Facebook. This is called, Sorry, face, Zoom this is called the, the Facebook. Uh, but the, Facebook. We, the reason why we're, we're bringing it up is like anytime there's something in the news related to real estate, what, what do you think they should do, Jeff? This is, and we were talking about this because I generally, I, I don't like commenting on regulations and those types of things. We're a publicly traded company, so I really can't. So my thought is anytime something like this happens, it's the perfect opportunity to reach mm -hmm. out to your past, to your clients. You know, is it, the, is it the past tenants? Is it people that, you know, you sold them a two family or an investment property to reach out for them and say, Hey, did you hear the news? You know, how does this affect you? Does it affect you? You know, it could be that a lot of people think, Oh, this affects just the landlords, but what about those tenants? Maybe that the landlord now, wasn't going to evict the person or previously wasn't even evict the person because of the moratorium or anything like that. But maybe the landlord was thinking about it and now they're going to do it and the person has needs a place to move to. Or the landlord may say, you know what, let me get these people out of here and then sell the property vacant. So I think it's an opportunity to reconnect with your right. buyers and sellers and those types of things. And that's what I would use it as. I mean, the best time to have that conversation is when there's some kind of pain going on, right? They're like, Oh, you know, I wanted to evict them. They they haven't been paying their mortgage. They've been difficult to work with. I tried to sell the property, but they wouldn't let me in. They said they had mm -hmm. COVID. You know, all these other things that I have experienced with tenant occupied properties during the pandemic, which we we want to be respectful of both tenants and landlords. But that's the time to have that conversation. Like you said, reach out Absolutely. to people that you have sold properties to and say, Hey, here's your here's your portfolio. Just like your financial planner would call you and say, you got 10 properties, 15 properties. It's worth, you thought it was worth this much, but property has appreciated, you know, 30, 40, 50% in the last five years, depending where you are, 100%, depending where you are. Here's what it's worth now. Now's a good time to cash out. But then on the flip side of that, why not call every single one of your clients and say, hey, now's a great time to pick up uh, an investment property, yep. right? Yeah, because <clears throat> what I think is going to wind up happening is... You know, with every single change, every single regulation, 
every single problem, there's always an opportunity. So I actually potentially see this as an opportunity of going to those invest, going to those, I don't want to say an investor, but going to those landlords and saying, hey, maybe now's the time to sell. Leave the people in there. Don't go through the hassle. Maybe sell it at a slight discount to an investor and let that investor deal with these people and get them out. So there, there's always opportunity in every scenario. I think part of real estate agents' jobs is to find that opportunity and and leverage that opportunity. And don't use it as doom and gloom. Right. Don't use it as, oh, this is the end of the world. Give it as, <clears throat> this is an opportunity that you have if your pain point has been, you've had this property for X amount of time and you know the tenants aren't paying rent or th th that's an opportunity there. Like, don't worry about it because to me, the court's already backlogged. They'll be backlogged. And it doesn't matter right. where and what state right. of where you, wherever you are. So now wild. might be the time for that opportunity. So <clears throat> my thing is see this as the opportunity to reach out to the people that you can potentially provide help to. That That's how I see it. Yeah, I mean, it's as you make phone calls, and people dread phone calls as it is, most people anyways, but calling people that you might know, and then you have actually a topic to talk about of interest and relevance to them. Is your you ring know, doorbell going off? Yeah, somebody's at my front door. <laughs> somebody's asking for my kids if they can go play. Um, <laughs> at least they're but, not asking if your kids want candy. Yeah, well, Jeffrey's on <laughs> doing a podcast right now, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but it's, it's two things, right? You have something to talk about when you call any one of your clients. But then the second mm -hmm. part is we're always looking at like, what kind of video content can I create? Every yeah. time you see something come out in the news, oh, here's, here's the update on what's going on in the news. Here's my opinion. You don't, you know, you don't have to say this is the law. Here's my opinion on it and how it can help you. Uh, but give us a call, you know, real estate's hyper local. When you think about real estate, think about great content and and i think it's even even a chance to work like property managers the people who've been handling these portfolios mm -hmm. you know and going to them and saying listen there may be an opportunity here i would love to help you out on the listing side of this i would love to help you out on the selling side of it because a lot of people who are professional property managers don't handle the sales side of it they only handle the property management side of it so to me with with every good news every bad news every indifferent news every regulation change there's always a stop there's always an opportunity for business and i think that's what makes people successful is seeing what's going on and how do i change this into an opportunity for myself and my clients and my customers that's how i say it so, Jim, part of the Yay! thing you told me, I hate that. So, uh, I, I think this is going to spin off to a conversation of, you know, stay in touch with our, our sphere, our past clients, our, our network of people, because I see this again as opportunities. You know, back in the day when I actually sold real estate, I, I would take like an article about this, you know, make a bunch of photocopies of it, stick a post it on it, and write. Hey, if you want to talk about oh, this or, hey, how, how does this affect you? Literally fold it up and stick in the mail and mail it to the person. Yeah. You know, so I see it as, an, I see it as, as opportunities to get in touch with people. So let, how about we take this spin on it is how do we stay in touch with people and how often should we stay in touch with people? Because I think that, I mean, unless our audience or listeners or watchers don't really want to talk about that. But otherwise, because we have much to say about nothing or anything. Well, again, if you have questions, comments, concerns, something on your mind, what you're going to do is you're going to take your little fingers here. You're going to go to the keyboard. <laughs> you're going to write that in the comments. You don't even have to talk. You don't have to get on video. None of that. We will read it. We will reply to it. Try to give us as much information <clears throat> as possible. Uh, but let's talk about client appreciation because I, I guess it's right where we're tying in, staying in, staying in touch with your sphere uh, and all that. Because we Well, can, just... can I ask you this question first? No. How many times? Okay, fine. I won't. No, go ahead. No, I don't want to. How many times should you, for a contact, how many times should you contact or how many touch points do you think you should have with your sphere, with your past clients? I'm not talking about like your mailing list. I'm actually talking about. Yeah, people that you've done business your, your, with. The people you've done business. And to me, these are people who, like, if you met them at a grocery store, you saw them at a grocery store, they would know your name and you would know the name too. That's how I'll define it as. Not that huge mailing list of, you know, 30,000 people you have. So how often do you, do you think they should stay in touch with it? 
once per quarter. Once once per quarter. Okay. That's my thought. I love what telling GM in this. You're wrong. I'm not. I, you said think. I think can't oh, be wrong. You think, so you okay. tell me. So <clears throat> statistically, this is the way it works. To save top of mind, top of mind, at a minimum, at a minimum, it is twice per month. What works okay. the best is three to four times per month. Now, people are going to say, holy crap, that's way too much. What do I do? What's the content? In, yeah, but it has to be. Ways? I'd like to hear that. Well, that it has to be different ways. So <clears throat> people all take in information differently, as you know, J-Man. Some people, you know, are kinesthetic. They need to have something in their hand. So you need to mail them at least one thing once per month. It's because those people, some people need something in their hand to connect to it. The next thing you absolutely should do is either sending them a Facebook message, a text message, email, something along those lines, because those are people who are more visual. So you can do one mailing, you can send one message or one email, one should absolutely be a video. Absolutely should be a video. So at a minimum, it is mail something, email them something, and a video. So those would be the minimum of the of the three touch points. The fourth one, if you can do, should be the pop up phone call. Should be the actual verbal conversation you can have with them. Okay. So statistically, I mean, I I didn't think about it like that uh, because that we do do that. We you know we send out the mailers, we send out something, mm -hmm. we do a shite ton of videos. Um, mm -hmm. And, and try and, and we have different videos for different audiences because I think that's important to yeah. talk about because uh, if it's something real estate related, something of interest, there was just an article that we have a certain zip code that was uh, in our market that was the second hottest zip code in the nation. It was a realtor.com wow. realtor article um, talked about it. So we created that, you know, created video. We didn't photocopy it, but we, you know, screenshot the article, linked to it. And then sent that to our folks and say, hey, if you know of anybody that's in this zip code who's thinking about selling, they could realize gains like they've never seen before. Or, you know, maybe just have any other additional questions. Feel free to reach out to us. Think about real estate. Think about the Monero team. You're architects for the American dream. Nice. I like that. I also want to say that all your touch points to the people shouldn't be real estate. Yeah. Like to me, if you send it, this is the thing. Why people say, oh, I couldn't send something, you know, three or four times a month. There's no way. Because you're thinking of just real estate pieces. Absolutely. If you send me four real estate pieces a month, three real estate pieces a month, I'm probably going to oh. just not even listen to not, not even watch them, not even open up the stuff. So on. one should be real estate related. That's old school. One should be real estate related. That's the Buffalo Bill schedule. One should be real estate related. One should absolutely not be real estate related. You know, one of the... <laughs> yeah, you want to say something? No, I just want to say that that mailer we send it out every football season and i, I know that all my clients aren't bills fans mm -hmm. but they get it and, they, and then i'll get them like it creates conversations they'll send me messages yeah. like don't send me this garbage this bullshit team. i'm not a bills fan <laughs> a bills fan what are you doing i'm like maybe yeah. hey maybe you should hop on the bandwagon while it's still time before we win a super bowl and it's just having a conversation you build that rapport and it's just like reconnecting in in, in so many ways so and and let's let's actually talk about that for a moment. So the biggest responses I've ever gotten um, for anything I've ever sent was the stuff that was non real estate. We used to, I used to send um, a, a letter out, which was something quirky or emotional or um, inspirational, and I would send that letter out or send it out via email, <clears throat> and I would get more responses from that. Then I would get anything else. Even if it was like, oh, Jeff, love that story. And just and you can go online, you can find tons of free, like inspirational type stories. Right. You know, stuff from, you know, you ever hear the story, you know, would it take a brick to get your attention? The story of the guy who was driving a brand new Mercedes, you know, was all proud of it, his first real car. And he was driving down the street and some little kid runs out in the street and slams his car, throws a brick at his car. And he pulls over and starts, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And the little kid was like, Mr. Mr. My brother's in a wheelchair. He fell down into the street. Can you help us? So the moral of the story is like, would it take a brick to get your attention? What are you missing out day to day that you should be? And like send something out like that. And I would get an influx of, oh, that was a great story. Thank you so much. Because 
you're going to hit someone at the perfect time and they're going to think you meant to send it to them because it was at that time. And to me, that's what creates those relationships and that's what creates those bonds. <clears throat> so when Aiden say, well, I don't have four like things that. to send you, like once a month, you can send out, just come up with something motivational, something silly, some stupid story, print it up, mail it or email it. Yeah. I mean, the Google has everything folks. You yep. can find it on the Google. Just make sure and we're not that, telling uh, you to. You're not going to copy and paste it like it's your story, but make sure like you're yep. always crediting the source, Creative Commons yep. with attribution. Um, Absolutely. Or link back to it if you're going to do it digitally. It's always a great way. You know, give credit yeah, but, where credit's due. You're the source of the sources, and just create conversations, man. Yeah, because um, really, that's. <clears throat> I think that's what this whole entire business is about. Is having conversations and more importantly is creating the opportunities to have those conversations. I, I think this is the best that our aesthetic has looked so far. It is like our, our, we're equal. We have the same size heads. Up. Yeah. We're <laughs> it's equally like the, lit it's, up. Yeah. I changed my camera settings after last week. Cause I was like, I didn't like, and this is part of with both of us. I think it's like we we're always about progress. Like, okay, that was good, but how can we make it just a little bit better? Right. I think after the first one, you had a certain camera and you're like, I don't like this camera. And you went and got it. You bought another camera. That's what I did. I went, I went and bought, I went, bought the Logitech, the bro, B R I O because Brio. I was looking all washed out. Yeah. Brio. Yeah. I was looking all washed out. <laughs> uh, but and, here's, here's, I think in a, in a permission based world, um, as far as communication and keeping in touch. And we were talking about before the, the broadcast started, about how, like, I had people yeah. who have opted in to receive communications from me. And, yep. you know, can spam laws, you should, like you said about the 30,000, there, there are people and there are, are brokers at one point in time that said, and everybody grab the phone book and just add them into your mm -hmm. database. And it's like, can't do that. <clears throat> people want to hear from you, like get permission, give them a reason why you're going to contact them. Um, and, and then I try to do that. <laughs> And sometimes I think people are so conditioned to just unsubscribe and hit stop mm -hmm. and, and, and like get to inbox zero that they don't realize what they're unsubscribing to. So I, I, I had some so, people go ahead. So you, I want, you, you can go. we tell yeah. this, this is a J, J man before we get on. Cause we always chat a couple of minutes beforehand had his uh, panties in a bunch for lack of a better word. Um, <laughs> Just because you threw me in the bun the bus earlier, yeah. Because some Jamin has a subscription. That's it's like you an SMS in. subscription service. You you opt in, and someone had opt in. It's better if I tell the story than you do because go ahead, I'll be quiet. So someone had mostly. someone had opt in, and um, where they were getting his messages and just replied with stop, which stops the text messages from going through, and then very shortly thereafter, send Jamin a message. Hey Jamin, I need help with this. Could you help me out? And I said, I would have responded, oh, when you responded, stop to me. That means you didn't want my help. That would have been my response to it. So, and that's permission. And it goes back to that permission base. Look, he's, he's just anking to say something here. Go ahead. No, you hit stop. I can't talk to you. Ha! Ha ha. No, I mean, that, that's, that's a, it's, it's, you know, sometimes you got to realize what you're doing. Okay, because like you opted in to begin to re like, hey, I think it's worded exactly like, would you like to know the next time we go live? Yes. Give us your cell phone number and we'll let you know. I'm not sending you a thing going, I'm the greatest speaker. Come to my next event. It's like we're going live. Actually, it was a twofer. I said, I'm going live at three and I'm also going live tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. And then this person hits, you know, it, and part of the to be compliant, we have, you know, stop messages at any time. Just type stop. They type stop, and then they reach out to me. Hey, I got a question about the, the, the Instagram and the reels, and I'm like, Shh. "You do, huh? Here are my that, coaching. That, my coaching information is here, and I sent them a link back." Like, and I'll give you the moral of the story because I know how J Man is. So this, this all started. J Man, remember the bomb bomb videos? J Man would send me a bomb bomb video, and I wouldn't watch it at all. And he'd be like, "Hey, you got my video?" I'm like, "Yeah, I watched it. It was great." And he was like, "Full of shit." No, you didn't. That's what you were. No, no, you didn't. And I'm like, "Oh crap." That's right. He can tell. So I really, I literally will call Jamie and randomly and say, Jamie, what about this? What about that? Well, like I'll ask a question. I'll ask me a question. We'll bounce ideas. But I know even if I don't want to watch his stuff, sorry, I will open the bomb bomb video and let it play. 
Because I'm like, like, listen, if I'm calling him and ask a question, that's like the least, the minimum that I can do mm -hmm. is is just watch what he sends me. Yeah, and, and sometimes I'll just go, hey, Jeff, just a quick message here. I know you're not going to watch this, so it really doesn't matter what <laughs> yeah, I, I say. <laughs> and, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, I love those. So, yeah. you know, have a great day. And I'll never get to the end of it, so it doesn't, it doesn't really <laughs> matter. It you make me sound matter. so bad. <clears throat> so Jackie said, I like that idea of sharing stories that evoke emotion and create connection. Yeah. Jessica. So Jessica. Was Jessica? Who did I say? You need to up your prescription. I do. I do. Well, the, what I'm watching is black on black. So can't or white on black. So you really can't say it. So part of <clears throat> this is what communications is, and this may help you understand why I do that. So this is what communications is. My job is to say something, do something that causes an emotion in you that leads to a specific behavior. That's what communication is. I say something, I do something that installs or creates an emotion in you that leads to a specific behavior. And when you understand that process, you understand this is the emotion I want to cause and this is the behavior. So it's something like that emotional or inspirational emotion. That's what I want to do. I want to invoke, ooh, hmm. Wow, that's a lot to think about. I want to invoke that, that, that emotion because the behavior I want is that emotion attached to me. Because if you can make an emotional attachment to someone or someone makes an emotional attachment to you, that's how that relationship succeeds and that's how that relationship continues. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I feel warm and fuzzy. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Let me see what I'm going to hit. But Surprise. I could give us some tips and tricks on evoking emotion, doctor. Uh, okay. Because I feel like it's because it, here's why. Here's what I want to say to agents that are watching this or listening to this uh, when it does eventually make it to a podcast that Je so, Jeffrey had promised because he's a man of his word and he's definitely going to take care of that. Um, I will. <laughs> you see what I did there. I but I think so often agents try to connect logically. Right. Yeah. They're like, it makes sense for you to buy a home because interest rates are low and the tax deductibility. And how about I want to buy a home so that my kids can run through my own backyard. Right. And 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 it's home. H-O-M-E, not a house, not an apartment. Pe people do not make decisions based upon logic, logic. and data. They make decisions based upon an emotion. They make the decision that they believe will make them feel the best at that time, given the information that they have. <clears throat> so let me break this down. So J-Man, say J-Man calls me, one of your friends calls you and they have a problem and you give them all the logical, rational reasons why they should or should not do what they're telling you they want to do. And you give them all the reasons why they shouldn't do it. All the logical. Yet they go and do it anyway. How many times does that happen to you? Because Most logic doesn't, yeah, <laughs> logic doesn't drive the decision. The emotion drives the decision. And then we will take the logic or we will twist the logic. We will find logic to justify or fit into an emotional decision. We will not twist an emotion to justify a logical decision. So when I talk about the emotion is, first comes down to is what's the behavior I want from them? Now people say, well, I want them to call me. No, th that's not what you want. Like that may be what you want, but the behavior I want is I want a connection. I want them to connect that feeling with Jeffrey because then when they think about Jeffrey, they're going to have that feeling. So if I can create an emotional attachment with the person, you know, the warm and fuzzy feelings by something I send them, when they think about real estate and say, Jeff, they have those warm and fuzzy feelings again. In essence, I'm creating an anchor to that emotion and, and anchoring that emotion to me. And when you look at your marketing and you look at your communications that way, not my ultimate goal is to have them to call me. It's what do I want them to think? What do I want them to feel, to feel. emotionally when they think about me or when they see me? Because well, you started this out with a friend, a friend named J-Man. Do you know somebody else named J-Man? That's your friend? No, just, I, well, I'm just, no, I'm just, 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 just using it. <laughs> oh, it was a fictional story. Okay. Uh, yes. But, well, I, I think a great way to do that is storytelling, like you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. uh, so what are some ways, because I know like when I, 
when one of the uh, National Speakers Association events that I went to, they had talked about uh, harvesting your stories f from your life, you know, and yep. thinking about all of the times in your life where something happened and it was a major transition or evoked some feeling in your life. So, and, and what was that that happened and mm -hmm. how can you tell that story or even in real estate? The transaction. Let me let me pause you and explain life. what that is. So Go that's ahead. what's called a universal experience. It's it, that's what's called in the art of telling stories. It's a universal experience. So you can talk a story about the first, how you learned how to drive a car because that's a universal experience to most people. The the curiosity you felt on Christmas morning, that's a universal experience. Opening a presents, your first birthday party, your first car, your first date, your whatever it happens to be. So if you can take a universal experience and wrap your story around that universal experience, because the story about the brick to get your attention, because we've all had that universal experience of not paying attention to what was directly in front of us. So if you're going to tell a story, come up with what's the universal experience that everyone's had or 90% of the population has had this experience. And let me tie my story around that. <laughs> yes uh you know I, I i find that when i when i tell stories about it's not oh i sold a home but when you, you can really tell the story of you know that that first time homeowner or mm -hmm. I, I tell one of a single mom who used to sleep in her car with her two kids uh you know that feeling that she started she started crying on the final walkthrough like that's what we do every day. We bring like yep. it's the American dream of home ownership. And if mm -hmm. you can you can show that passion and emotion to your clients, it's not like are you the best? Do you sell the most? Do you have market share? None of that matters if you can, you know, evoke those emotions and and get them to like, know, and trust you, <clears throat> and maybe make if them the, laugh. <coughs> yeah, videos. if it's if it's a real estate story, and they can be real estate related, <clears throat> you should have at least one or two stories. For almost every single situation so is it that first time home buyer that you can tell a story about and the story isn't about you it's about the situation or what stop hitting me the situation or what happened same thing like maybe it's that move up buyer maybe it's that downsize buyer that you're dealing with you know a couple that their kids just went off to college and to tell that story of and this is the thing is what's the story what was the problem they have and how did you Help them come to a solution. Not, oh, I solved it. Look at me. I'm a superstar. It's how are you involved to help with that solution? And and because th those, when you're speaking to that couple and say, oh, yeah, we're downsizing. Our kids are off to college. You know, they're graduating right. next year. You, you know, I was dealing with someone just like you, you know, the Smiths. And they were going through something very similar. They lived in this huge found. house their entire life. Yeah, I'm doing a field file found. They lived in this whole house their entire life. And it was, it was the house their kids grew up in. But they realized, like you, it, it was the time to move on to their next chapter. So when you can tell that story and wrap that emotion in there, because you know what? I don't have kids off to college, so I can't even imagine how that feels. But I bet you can imagine how the Smiths feel, can't you? Oh, yeah, Jeff, it, it, it's really hard. So listen, part of my job here is to make sure that I make this as easy to experience for you, because I know it can be absolutely hugely difficult, because I've dealt with people just like you before. So I can wrap the whole entire story around the emotion. And that's what makes the stories work. And that's what makes those connections. You're not saying anything. There's going to be silence on the replay. <laughs> yeah. Some, well, that the pause could be powerful as well. Right. I think absolutely. Uh, maybe that was my point. I was trying to make, instead of thinking about what I was going to say, there are times for you to just be quiet and listen. Oh. If you're new to sales or you're new to that kind of like interaction with somebody and, and the art of conversation, you don't always have to fill silence with your voice. And like, oh, and you know what else? <laughs> and it's like, shut up. Shut up. As someone said time. this to me once, and I think it was actually my brother. Oh, it's probably not. It's not his original quote. I know it's not his original quote, but only speak when your words improve upon the silence. Only speak when your words improve upon the silence. There's nothing wrong with silence. And if you're going to open your mouth just to say something, that's not improving the silence.
<laughs> You've both seen how long you've been quiet there for. Yes, that was funny. So what else so we got, questions? folks? Ask us anything. Any questions from the audience? Ask us anything. Much to say about nothing, but we have a lot to say about a lot of things. What did you should say today? I can, I will, end of story. I like oh. that. I'm oh, yeah. To, I'm can. just trying to pull a shirt today. Because oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Jay Man complained last time when I asked him to switch it so you actually can read what my shirt said. So I, I didn't wear that shirt today. You didn't wear the shirt. Hmm. It's very interesting. What's very interesting? I think we're very interesting. Yeah. You're yeah. right. I do move around. Jay said I have, you have to give me a bigger box because I move around a lot on my screen. Your autofocus is slow. I don't know if I do that. It was the back and forth. It was the back and forth. Mm -hmm. So, Jim, man, what else can we talk about? Oh, I, 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 I've been running this whole conversation. So it says, um, Jessica said, life is better with a chicken coop. Okay. Or it could be a chicken co-op. It, maybe it's a very high end buyer buying a co op. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a New Yorker interpreting a Tennessee saying. Yeah. Like, what is life is better with a chicken coop? I, Jessica, Jessica, could you elaborate on that one? Because I'm really interested. And this is the other thing with the story, by the way. Your story has to go to your audience. I was teaching a class and we were talking about like using metaphors. <laughs> I know what it is. I know it's said a chicken coop, but so I was teaching a class and we told him about using metaphors, simila, sim, similes and analogies. And I said, all right, everybody's going to come up one and come up with like how you work with buyers. Like, so the person says to me, well, you know, I take them down the bridal path so they can drink from the water of knowledge and I hold the reins the and I'm like, the bridal path. Right. They went and I knew what they were talking about, but yeah. I'm a New Yorker. So, so I really, I'm like, I knew they told me horses, but I'm like, you realize I'm from New York City, right? And the guy's like, yeah. I'm like, do you understand? That makes no sense to me whatsoever. So your story has to correlate to the audience. Like more than anything else is, does it make sense to the audience? Not does it make sense to me? Oh, that's what a shirt says. Oh. Yes. I, uh, the, uh... I wonder what the association of maintenance fees are in a chicken co-op. <laughs> <laughs> you have chicken, to file them with the attorney. Do you have to, do you have to file those plans with the attorney general's office. Well, you Not know, the, stupid the, real estate jokes. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the co op board is really quite scared on occasion, yeah. and uh, I am not sure. So watch out for those wolves. About. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and talking about stories, relative stories. Uh, similes and metaphors. I was listening to a speaker the other, not the other day, but when we could see people pre-pandemic, and he was like, "Well, we can always see people." Well, in person. Oh, okay. Just and he was talking about, oh yeah, you know, there's a really small town, like like the, like the Andy Griffith show, and I saw half half the audience was like, well, "What is Andy he talking Griffith. about, the Andy Griffith show?" Yeah. Like, and then you know, there you go. I remember because it's. I got an older brother. My dad okay. make me watch it. You know, that kind of stuff. But Opie's making movies now. Yeah. Yeah. He was worth a couple more dollars than he was as Opie. Anywho, um, he may be one of our clients, so I don't want to talk about him. Um, anyway, so what else do we want to talk about there, Jay, man? I got nothing else. What do you mean I you just, got nothing else? I just what do you mean? Say, huh? What do you mean you have nothing else? I don't believe that. I mean, I got a lot, but you know, I would like for you to use your creative magic. What do you got? Oh, I have time. I've just been talking. I have tons of stuff. Someone throw out a topic in the chat, throw out a topic in the chat. This is like, this and is we'll like just, improv. Give us a we'll scene, an emotion and a person. So we were actually, I'll give you something we were talking about this morning. <clears throat> we have a, 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 with my company with element, we have a, like I said, chickens, not that I have an outhouse. Thanks for the laugh. Okay. I don't think we said you had an out. Anyway, so we were we, we have a morning role play that we do. Uh, it's, a, it's 11.30 a.m. New York time, 9.30 a.m. No, 8.30 a.m. California time. Yeah, 8.30 a.m. California time. Okay. So it, it's not we have roughly details. 
we have like a hundred of our agents on there and we just throw out a scenario of what's going on we role play it so um a lot of times they make me play like the seller of those types of things because i can be tough as most people know but it's not my normal personality like i can be no, easy going or i can be no, tough you're, re you're really easy going anyway so uh it's hard one of the things you're going to my sarcasm and, and what, i made a sarcastic what, face for those of you who are listening and not watching <laughs> go ahead yeah, so we were going through going. we were going through about um a seller asking for a reduction in commission so we went through the whole entire thing and then like um we jump in there and we say okay i would change the way you said this i would change the way you said it. one of the things that one of the agents was said is you know here's what i would like to tell you and and i said to math fact i'm like what you said was great but please don't tell people this is what i want to tell you just tell them that so one of the things that one right. of somebody let had me said tell is, you let me tell you let me tell I you no just to. Yeah. To just ask or just tell. So, yeah. and this is the point of this. One of the things that the person I'd, uh, another, another agent I said, well, you know, Mr. Williams is selling. That's the reason why I really want your listing. And I stopped. I said, no, 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 no. You really want your, their listing means nothing to that seller. Right. The word should be, I really want to be the agent who sells your home for you. To help you make a move. Because to help you make the move. I really want to be the agent who sells. I am the agent who should sell your house. I am the most qualified agent to sell your house for you. It's a lot different than I'm the most qualified agent to list your house. Because if you think about it, do sellers want to list their houses or do they want to get it sold? So it should be you're the agent who's going to sell their house, not just list their house. Well, here's here's here I can segue on this nicely. The importance of role playing. Yeah. If you're, if you're watching this or listening to it and you don't role play on a regular basis, you may think like, oh, that's so dumb. It's so corny. It's so old school. But it's like you go into battle every day. Every client you come in contact with, if you're not ready to have the conversation and overcome those objections, mm -hmm. you're not going to win the listing. Whatever Jeff does, you're not going to really, even if you really want them to list with you, like you got to be able to overcome any objection. I know. When I was prospecting a lot, and I, I mainly work by referral now, but when you, when you really strengthen that, those conversations, it's like anything you say, you got to go in there and be like anything in your head, anything you say, I'm going to overcome like that level of confidence. And, and you know that like, you're not going to go on a listing appointment. You're going to go get the listing. You're going to go get the listing. Listen, I've, I've been I've been a real estate god. I, it's probably almost thirty years at this point. I'm um, probably almost thirty years, and I I don't actively you're, sell anymore. You're old. Yeah, it's probably 30, probably 25, 26, 27, between twenty five and thirty years. Probably yeah, yeah, probably yeah, probably twenty five years. Morning and fifties again. I'm 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 on a role play call every single morning. At like literally five days a week for a half hour. And it's a company role play call. Again, we have a hundred and some odd agents jump on there. It's done via right. Zoom. And I'm on there every single morning. Not because not only that are we helping coaching agents, it's myself, it's you know, Brad Feldman, one of our managed California, and Peter Hernandez, which is our president of our Western region. It's not only that we're on there to help them coach the agents, is I learn a lot from being on there. Because I have a book that I'm, oh, that was a really good line. Oh, I never thought about saying it that way. So, like, I don't need the practice because that's not what I do for a living anymore. But I right. do need the practice because I deal with agents every single day. See, but so now let, let's just say this, though. Tomorrow, if for whatever reason you started selling, you'd be ready. Oh, absolutely. Right. 100%. Listen, it's I've heard objections that I've never heard before that we had to come up with the objection handlers on the fly. So literally, and there's, there's nothing more powerful than a group of people with the same exact goal. So if you can get and this, you can have one role play partner, we like it this way, because, you know, maybe there's 15 people over the course of the week or 20 people over the course of the week that are actually participating, but we open it up to all our agents, so all our agents can hear it, not all of them feel comfortable jumping in and role playing, but at least they can listen to it. There's nothing more powerful than a group of a group of people who want to help each other succeed five days a week. It's hugely powerful, hugely, hugely, hugely powerful. You know, like I, I would do that if I owned, it. you know, if that's my idea, that's my idea sound. Yeah. If, if I ran a brokerage right now, if I owned my own brokerage, I don't care if you're from New York city, you're from California, from Wichita, Kansas, or, or, or Billings, 
See, it looks like a Billy was for Billings. Um, that's what I would do. Like I would say, hey, listen, this is what I'm gonna do. Every single morning at eight o'clock in the morning, I'm gonna flip on the Zoom. We're gonna have a role play. You can come and just listen. You can participate. You can do whatever you want. But I'm gonna be there every single morning. And guess what? You show up every so. If the brokers listen to this, you show up every single morning at eight o'clock. There might be one person the first day. There might be ten people the first day. If people are there or not there, you show up every single morning. Because to me, that's a huge amount of value of having that many different. And what I love about it is, is especially if, if you can do this with a network of people from across the country. Because I know I hear so many tips from our agents in Texas. Oh, well, we do things this way, and this is how we say it. Or you know, someone in Aspen saying, oh, oh, how about this? I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. I never thought of that before. Because we all get stuck in our own little world. I, I think it's it's hugely powerful to do. Well, say the this. Morning role play with Jamin. If you're watching this now. On, whether it's live or on the replay, say yes in the comments below, and we'll get you on some kind of role play at least once a week. I'm not going to do every day, uh, but at least once a week. I would do week, that. Uh, I think, you know, agents from all over. I think there's huge value with agents from all over and even from different companies coming together with just one goal, everybody getting better. So say yes. Say yes. yes I can. I will. Yeah. End of story. Yeah. I think that I think it's to me it's and again I I've, I've been doing it actively involved in it since we've been doing it via Zoom for the past almost two years now, and, and the amount of stuff that you learn like I said just that whole I don't want your listing it's not that you're going for the person's listing you want to be the person to help them get their home sold that was literally from this morning, and that was a huge you know just saying it was like that's a, a big mental shift. So that's my thought. That so Jimmy, you want to do the end of our time? You want to do one day? One day a week morning role play? Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll figure it out once we have the people that we'll figure out a good time because I think between the two of us, we're both like moving targets. So like, Jay, I know one o'clock was good, but... Yeah, that, that's usually... Sorry. It's okay. That's uh, We normally do this on Tuesdays. That's why I threw me off. The and we were running orientation this week and, you yeah, know, yeah, no, I my mean, back, all I'm my are, ankle, those are my side. Excuses. I couldn't pick up the phone. My dog ate my homework. I'm sorry. I know I should cold call more. And reach uh, out to we my should spirit, end with, so with the fact that you sent me a do. text that said, hi, sweetie, or something. <laughs> it was, hi, babe. And it was meant for my girlfriend. Thank you very much, J-Man. <laughs> <Don't, laughs> you know, when you get uncomfortable, you squirm in your seat. It's I like it a lot. No, I actually thought it was very, very funny. Because I think I've actually done it to you before by accident. He was happy to text me the same time my girlfriend texted me, too. But look what he sent me. He sent me his little peaky bubble. With uh, hearts to me, which is. See, I was just trying to evoke emotion. The emotion now when you vomit. think of me, you think <laughs> love. <laughs> no, I think. You cannot think resist stuff. me. All right, folks. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in. My name is Jeremiah. It's J-Man Monero with J-Man Speaks. And I am. And I am Jeffrey Scott Stan. And this is. Much to say about nothing. Nothing. So we'll see everybody on the next one. Again, write in the chat if you're interested in joining a role play, because we can do that. We can do it. Peace out. See ya. <laughs>